Hello, and welcome to all of Adam's Devoted, to my second video on the food of Fallout. Where the last video was focused on the packaged and processed foods of Fallout, which mostly consisted of pre-war food, this one is about prepared or craftable food items that are mostly post-war in origin. While the last video had a number of foods that sounded good, and maybe made you a bit hungry, I have a feeling this one will have the opposite effect. Unless you guys are into food poisoning, in which case, more power to you. So let's start this off with one that many people thought I forgot in my last video. One of the most infuriating items of food in the whole series is the perfectly preserved pie. How's that for some alliteration? Found in Fallout 4 and 76, it is often, but not always, found in a porta diner, which is meant to dispense the colorful treat, albeit very unreliably. It is no secret at this point that the chances to successfully get the pie are based on the player's luck. Following this equation here, it will take 75 to 105 attempts to finally get the pie. Depending on the luck of the player, honestly, that is far more than I ever had the patience for, so I have never actually gotten the pie except for one specific location. The pie itself looks like it was made yesterday, being quite colorful with some fruit-like sauce on a white pie and some sort of whipped topping. As far as what kind of pie this could be, I want to hear from you pie experts. But I did notice it is lacking a crust, which is a serious pie faux pas. In Fallout 4 it heals for 30 HP and surprisingly, no rads, while in Fallout 76 it heals for 20 and doses you for 1 rad. It is interesting to note that this is one of the very few pre-war foods that will not irradiate the player in Fallout 4. So maybe this is owing to the Porta Diner shielding it but apparently the West Virginian models had a flaw because they are all irradiated there. Obviously, this is a satirical take on the prevalence of preservatives in 20th century America, and a Fallout 4 NPC named Mel will comment that he would not trust anything that was perfectly preserved for 200 years. And I'm inclined to agree. In survival mode, the pie will not curb hunger when eaten, and one porta diner found in the Nuka World junkyard has a 100% chance of dispensing the pie which, like I stated earlier, is the only one I've actually gotten, and previous to this, I actually thought the Porta Diners were not meant to ever dispense the pies. There's obviously some serious irony with this Porta Diner being in the junkyard, while being the only Porta Diner that will actually give you your pie on the first try. Or maybe the Porta Diners were really made to not dispense reliably, which would be pretty on brand for Fallout Corporate America. We have several Meyerlurk based foods, so let's look at Meyerlurk cakes first. In Fallout 4, we have the chance to make Meyerlurk cakes using grain, oil, Meyerlurk meat, and Meyerlurk eggs. I think the best comparison for this would be crab cakes, and indeed, in the Fallout 4 cookbook, the recipe has us use crab. Because of that, I was a little surprised to see the in-game model, which I guess are two different shaped Meyerlurk cakes together, or something. The effects of this food item are interesting, as it heals for 140 HP and allows breathing underwater for 30 minutes, which... The implications of this kind of make my head spin. Let's just say that we probably know how Gill Man from the Creature from the Black Lagoon was made. Fallout 76 gets fancy with a peppered Meyerlurk patty and aioli sauce, which is a mayonnaise based sauce spiced with blood leaf in this case. It heals for an impressive 250 HP for a few rads and increases rad resistance. The soft shell patty in Fallout 76 is the most appetizing looking and is mixed with potatoes and other spices, healing for 60 HP and adding 3 to agility for 2 rads. I just hope the meat comes from standard Meyerlurks or Meyerlurk hunters, because the salamander looking Meyerlurk kings seem like they'd be pretty gross. Meyerlurk jerky was introduced in Far Harbor and is shown as chunks of meat on a shish kebab, which is not how I am accustomed to seeing jerky. Turning a crab-like meat into jerky is not common, and indeed would be difficult due to how quickly it spoils. That isn't the weirdest part though, since part of the recipe for this includes the very safe and totally fine to ingest antifreeze. And in case the sarcasm went unnoticed, please, for the love of Adam, do not ingest antifreeze. That is your Rad King pro tip of the day. I have a hard time understanding what the antifreeze would be for, but this food somehow increases HP and poison resistance while increasing perception. Maybe the poison resistance comes as the body slowly builds a tolerance to antifreeze or something. I don't know. I am not a toxicology expert or anything. Smoked Meyerlurk fillets were introduced in Fallout 76 and look just like the Meyerlurk cakes. 
They are obviously smoked and heal for 250 HP and increase carry weight by 30 for only 2 rads. Brain bombs are not as disgusting as they sound since they use brain fungus rather than real brains. Introduced in Fallout 76, it is made mainly with brain fungus, sugar bombs, and mothman eggs. I don't understand exactly how it's made however since it just looks like a whole chunk of brain fungus rather than being mixed up with the other ingredients. Prior to a certain patch this food never spoiled, but that was not intentional. This food has some crazy advantages, increasing HP by 90, intelligence by 3, it is a brain fungus after all, and 300 AP. You know, I hear people say, how did we ever invent bread? Mixing powdered grains, salt, oils, and fats only to heat it up and voila. Well, what I want to know is how the freak someone mixed brain fungus, sugar bombs, and mothman eggs to make this food. Give me some of your best guesses in the comments. Chitlins are a prepared consumable item in Fallout Tactics and heal only 3 HP while being worth 20 caps, making it a pretty expensive item for the low amount of healing it offers. There doesn't seem to be anything special about these, but for those that are culinarily challenged, chitlins are pig intestine that can be boiled, baked, or fried and stuffed with mincemeat. I have never had the chance to eat them, but I would try if given the chance. Apparently they are a delicacy in post-war Chicago though. Fallout 76 has its own version of chitlins that are not craftable, even though their files are in the game. They look uh, appetizing, I guess, and would increase endurance by two and be made of wolf meat. Apparently, their name of Chitlins con carne is a reference to the 1963 jazz instrumental of the same name. The humble cookie is present in Fallout 2 and Fallout Tactics, where it increases AP in both and a bit of HP in Tactics. The in-game description states that it is a chocolate chip cookie, which is not at all addictive, so take as many as you like. I have to say, of all the lies Fallout has told us, this has to be the coldest. These don't dose for any rads, and I get the impression that they are post-war food items, even though one can be found in the Sierra Army Depot, which could be argued to be pre-war in origin, but there have been people in the post-war that have visited the depot. In tactics, the only one that can be found is on the corpse of a super mutant called Thelma, which sounds yummy. Fallout 76 gives us another Michelin level meal with the Bloatfly Loaf. It is made by combining various ingredients including glowing fungus and is apparently all mixed together. But I am baffled by the in-game appearance which looks nothing like a loaf and everything like a rotting gizzard. You get a fairly average amount of HP and a few rads but it increases rad resistance by 30. And while we're talking about Bloatflies, New Vegas has Bloatfly Sliders. Made with Bloatfly meat and prickly pear, it heals for a bit of HP and one rad, but is much more useful in hardcore mode where it reduces hunger and dehydration fairly substantially while being readily available, especially in the early game. It is interesting that this food cannot be bought anywhere and instead is only ever crafted by the player. The blood bug pepper steak was introduced in Fallout 76 and it is exactly what it sounds like, giving a low dose of rads and an average amount of HP at 2.4 HP per second for 25 seconds. This item looks suspiciously like the aforementioned bloatfly loaf. I should probably give up trying to make sense of some of these things, but I have a hard time thinking of what part of a blood bug would have really any meat on it, let alone something that looks like this. The vegetable soup from Fallout 4 is the first item to not sound like an ad lib exercise, and the first of these I wouldn't have a problem eating. Made with a carrot, potato, and dirty water, yes, dirty water, not purified water, this simple meal has moderate healing and plus 25 radiation resistance for an hour. The deliciously named mud cookie of Fallout 76 actually looks worse than you would imagine. The real question is, why is this a mud cookie? It looks like it could be a vomit cookie instead. It is made with beer, razor grain, and Mirelurk eggs, which I don't understand how that makes a cookie, as it sounds like it would just be some sort of flatbread. Healing only 25 HP for 5 rads, it can replenish 180 points of AP which gives it decent utility. Gecko kebabs are found in Fallout New Vegas. They are essentially what one would expect a gecko kebab to look like. It takes a banana yucca fruit and a jalapeno pepper and used to also require buffalo gourd seed but that was removed in a patch. It can provide a good boost to both hunger and dehydration in hardcore mode and can be crafted very early in the game, making it useful. 
There's also the gecko steak, which requires only the meat, although the healing potential isn't as great as the kebabs. Fallout 2 mentions several gecko-based dishes, although they are never shown in the game. Medallions of grilled gecko are essentially gecko steaks, but smaller. Gecko pie is mentioned, but I hope it's something like a meat pie or a chicken pot pie, because a sweet pie with meat in it does not sound appetizing. Vault 21 in Fallout New Vegas has a dish called applesauce gecko stew on their menu, which I have a really hard time making heads or tails of. Fallout 76 has fried deer skins, which don't look too bad, and give a low radiation dose, average HP, and plus 3 to AP regeneration. It is made with bourbon, thistle, and snaptail reed, but no oil for some reason. I also could not find any mention of fried deer skins or cracklings as they are often referred to, although I don't know if there's a real culinary reason for this or if this is just so niche that I couldn't find any examples online. I will say though, coming from a family that hunted a lot, I have never heard of such a thing. On the subject of fried foods, Fallout 76 also has fried rad toad legs, which takes boiled water, pepper, and razor grain, so they are actually boiled rad toad legs? They give a 60 HP boost for only 2 rads, and will boost the player's carry weight by 20, which is pretty impressive. Fried frog legs are found in the American South, as well as French and Chinese cuisines. After having some myself, they were surprisingly good and not at all what I was expecting, so maybe these larger rad toads could be the next big hit. We could start up a Kentucky Fried Toad and get a bucket of toad drumsticks. The meat pie was a consumable in Fallout Tactics that only healed for 3 HP and had a one-word in-game description that just said, Doubtful. Seeing the in-game representation of the meat pie makes it pretty clear that if it was ever made of meat, it is not meat anymore. Fallout 76 has their own version of this with the mystery meat pie, which is represented as being in a can but is a similar sickly yellow color. It can be crafted using intestines, spices, spoiled meat, and toxic water, which kind of takes the mystery out of it because all these ingredients are literal garbage. The most surprising thing about this concoction is rather than giving the player botulism or something, it heals 60 HP, adds 20 to carry weight, and boosts endurance by 3. So. Before you throw away bad meat at home, consider mixing it with spices and intestines, because apparently, that makes it safe. We aren't done with weird meat pies though, as Fallout 3 and New Vegas have these so-called strange meat pies made from strange meat. In these games, that is simply a euphemism for human meat, and these pies don't have much nutritional value. In Fallout 3, they are found at Andale, and in New Vegas, they can be prepared at the Ultralux. New Vegas also has an imitation strange meat pie that Philippe can prepare for Ultralux patrons in lieu of human meat, which has the same healing stats but even less satiation in hardcore mode. Other than meat pies, there are a bunch of other pies as well. The pie floater is one of the strangest food concepts I have seen, where it is simply a meat pie that is floating in, and I quote, a putrescent green liquid. It heals for some HP, but lowers damage resistance by 25, making this a questionable food to eat at basically every level. The pothole pie is found in Fallout 76, healing for 30 HP and increases damage resistance by 10, while also being one of the more radioactive foods here, dosing for 10 rads. It is made by cooking Fancy Lad snack cakes and squirrel bits together, which sounds like an awful use of Fancy Lads, because everyone freaking loves those things. It ends up being another sickly yellow color, replenishing a bit of HP and plus 10 damage resistance, while dosing for 15 rads. I don't know what the origin of the name is. I see some references to pothole pies, but these seem to be isolated instances, rather than a well-known kind of pie. Let me know if you know of some kind of pothole pie though. Speaking of well-known pies, players can make a pumpkin pie in Fallout 76 that surprisingly looks just like a pumpkin pie you can buy at the store, and you get 40 plus AP for an hour and average HP and rat effects. The Mississippi Quantum Pie is found in Fallout 3 and can be made by Sierra Petrovita after completing the Nuka-Cola and Mississippi Quantum Pie quests. She can make it upon request from the player and increases strength by 1, lowers intelligence by 1, and increases AP by 20. The effects are similar to the effects of the ingredients, namely Nuka-Cola Quantum and Vodka, although there is no chance for addiction with the pie. It also takes flour, which is a non-consumable miscellaneous item in Fallout 3 that is actually not very common, so not too many pies can be made. Although Corn Pone in Fallout 76 is not a pie, it uses the same asset as the pumpkin pie, so I'm going to slot it in right here. Corn Pone is similar to Corn Bread, but simpler to make, and the in-game version offers 45 HP and plus 2 to Charisma, 
and I am sad to say I have never actually eaten corn pone myself. But apparently, it was one of Abraham Lincoln's favorite foods, and Honest Abe would never lead us astray. Fallout 76 gives us another food item with the Blackberry Honey Crisp, which sounds a lot better than it looks. Since honestly, it looks like it could be almost anything. It is interesting that it takes royal jelly, yet is called a honey crisp, because royal jelly and honey are not the same. Royal jelly is only consumed by queen bees and future queen bees, and human uses can include ingestion, although it has to be consumed in small doses and carries an increased risk of allergic reactions. Its most common use is in lotions and topical creams as a collagen enhancer. That said, if this pastry has honey or honeycomb and blackberry filling, sign me up. It has very solid effects, increasing HP and AP substantially while also increasing AP regeneration. Fallout Tactics has the so-called bug on the shell, which is just a fancy way of saying they cooked an entire bug. I'm no expert in bug-based cuisine, but doesn't it make more sense to just cook the bug and then crack it open, as opposed to cracking it open and then cooking the insides? I'm just thinking of the way lobsters and crabs are prepared and feel like it would be a similar process. The image is a bit hard to make out, but it looks like the thorax and abdomen of a large spiked insect with garnish, but the resolution isn't great, so maybe I'm missing something here. Looking at the stats, I don't see anything talking about HP replenishment, which is strange, and apparently it only increases the number of rads. If this is actually the case, I do not see the point in even consuming this item. Slop is the food item provided to the slaves in the Pit DLC, and although it shares the same in-game assets as the noodles, it is anything but. Kai explains that it is made from a mix of irradiated water, which there's plenty of in the Pit, and trog meat, which could carry implications of cannibalism since trogs were human at one point. It heals for 25 HP, but also has a big rad dose of 25, meaning that with zero radiation resistance, a player would die after consuming 40 servings. What is interesting is that the food is not affected by the cannibal perk, maybe indicating that trogs are different enough on a biological level that they could no longer be described as human. Let's be honest though, that really doesn't make this any more appealing since trogs were human at some point and just degenerated due to the troglodyte degeneration contagion. Still though, I do hear trog meat is better for the environment than beef. The sweet roll is an iconic food that spans more than just Fallout and is present in all of the Bethesda Fallout games except Fallout New Vegas. Where it is in the game files, it just goes unused. In Fallout 3, it is a unique item that plays an important role in the game's lengthy tutorial being given to the player by Old Lady Palmer. And even though it is difficult to make out much of the sweet roll itself, it does look like it could be pretty tasty. Most of you will remember this part of the tutorial. But what is interesting is that the whole scenario with Butch and his two buddies trying to take your sweet roll is that it's a running gag with Bethesda. See, in Elder Scrolls Arena, the player was asked a series of questions to help determine the character class. One of them presented the so-called sweet roll scenario where three people try and take this player's sweet roll by force. This same question would be included in Daggerfall and Morrowind in the following form. While in town, the baker gives you a sweet roll. Delighted, you take it into an alleyway to enjoy, only to be intercepted by a gang of three kids your age. The leader demands the sweet roll, or else he and his friends will beat you and take it. The hens would come to roost in Fallout 3, where this hypothetical is made real introducing the players to interacting with NPCs and the types of choices and consequences they could expect from the game. Sweet rolls would appear in Skyrim in a different form and later in Fallout 4 and 76 in what is definitely the grossest representation in any game to date. Looking like a rotting piece of toast, it somehow provides more HP than the fresh one in Fallout 3. 20 HP compared to 5. Maybe the vault food preparation is devoid of much nutrition. Or maybe the fermented old sweet rolls provide a lot more nutrition. I could see either scenario. Fallout 4 also has a birthday version found in the Reeb Marina that has some birthday candles for that perfect post-apocalyptic birthday party. I'm going to call this video here. Although there's a lot more to cover with the food of Fallout that will necessitate at least one other video, maybe two. There's a short comment highlight from my last Fallout Bible video, starting with another channel first, a correction to a highlight from a previous video. Greg Fair let me know that the Gatling Cannon's first use in war was indeed the American Civil War, and that is my bad for not double checking. 
Skate Jock Kid made a post that I pinned for a good audio version of A Canticle for Leibowitz that if you are curious, you can check out. If you prefer reading over an audio version, I encourage you to check the book out as it seems to have a fairly large effect on the interplay developers. I also just wanted to say that I loved all the discussion and comments on my 30k subscriber video. There have been multiple suggestions and thoughts that I have really liked. One of the things I really love about the Fallout community is the creativity that I see expressed in comments here, but also in other places online. Maybe one day some of these ideas will percolate and end up in future games. Who knows? I do know that some of the best and most popular mods have been integrated into Fallout games. So everyone that has even a passing interest in making mods should definitely look more into it and try their hand when they have some free time. It doesn't have to be some huge complicated quest mod or some completely original animated and textured game asset. It can be changing some stats around to make something more balanced or something similar to cut your teeth on modding. I know I've been wanting to get into this myself and time permitting, I will. I also hope to be able to play my way through Fallout 76 in the near future, and when I am able to, I will let you guys know, since I'd really like to play with any of you that would like to play. May Adam bless you all, and I'll see you in two weeks with another video.